Welcome, this is Eric Martin with the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of Maine. Today we'll be looking at normal and shear stresses for beams and bending. In this beam we have an area of pure bending. Pure bending occurs in areas where bending moment is the only load. So between our two point loads, we have no shear force and only a bending moment. So our shear force is zero and our bending moment is constant. The sign convention we'll use for beams and bending has a positive bending when we have a concave up or a smile. And here we see a positive bending moment. We see that we've got the smile. Negative bending has a concave down shape, such as a frown. As we look at a deformed shape of our beam, we see on this top portion that we have compression and the bottom portion we have tension. What that's saying is the top portion is going to shorten and the bottom portion will elongate. We're going to have a surface in between these two that won't change in shape. We call this our neutral surface. There's no shortening or lengthening along the x-axis. And we can see the same thing for the shape down here. Along with there being no lengthening or shortening, there's also no bending stress. So on the top we have a compressive stress and it's maximum at the top surface and then it decreases and then it increases uh, in tension as it reaches the bottom. And the neutral surface is this surface again that has no lengthening or shortening and that is located at the centroid. That's located along the XZ plane and the centroid of our cross section defines our XYZ axis. To calculate our bending stress, we use what's called the flexure formula. The flexure formula is written as sigma x is equal to negative my over iz. Where we have negative x is our bending stress, and it's a normal stress as we see here. m is our bending moment, and it can be positive as we defined earlier, or negative. y is the y coordinate from our neutral surface, and so again here's our neutral surface along the x z plane. And then finally iz is a moment of inertia about the z axis. When we use the flexure formula we can see that when y is positive and we have a positive bending moment such as we have here that at the top surface of our beam we are going to have a negative stress because of our negative sign. If y is negative, such as at the bottom of the beam, and we have a positive bending moment, we'll have a negative y and a negative sign on our flexure formula, and we can see that those two will give us a tensile stress, and we can see that by our graphic. So we should understand that the maximum stresses occur either at the top surface or the bottom surface of our beam, because that's the furthest distance from our centroid. Instead of using y as a coordinate, what we can also do is we can use what's called c top and c bottom, and these are distances, and that will give us the equation that we see here, which has um, the stress at the top and the stress at the bottom in terms of c top and c bottom, respectively. Since these two equations don't have any negative signs, we need to inspect each situation to determine whether it's tension or compression, um, if necessary. Let's do a quick example. Here we have a beam segment with an 11 kip foot bending moment at each end of the beam. And we want to determine the maximum tensile and compressive bending stresses. The beam has a T cross section. And we can tell by observation that the maximum tensile stress will be at the top and the maximum compressive stress will be at the bottom. We'll use equations that we discussed a few minutes ago, and when we look at that, we recognize that we know our m, our bending moment, and that was given. And we'll have to determine what c top and iz are, as well as c bottom. If you would like to see the details on calculating the section properties for this cross section, you can see my moment of inertia YouTube video, and I'll put a link in the about section.
8.32 inches is Y bar. That's the distance between the bottom surface and the centroid. And then IZ is our moment of inertia about the Z axis. Now let's calculate C bottom and C top. C bottom, that's just the distance between my centroid and my bottom surface, which is Y bar. And so that's 8.32 inches. C top, that's the distance between the top surface and my centroid. And so that's going to be 12 plus 1, so 13 inches minus 8.32 inches. That's 4.68 inches. Now that we have our section properties, we're able to use our equations to determine the stress at the top surface of our beam. And we have sigma top is equal to 11 kip foot. And that's going to be converted to kip inch. And so we'll divide by 1 foot, multiply by 12 inches. And C top is 4.68 inches. We divide that by our moment of inertia, 488 inches to the fourth power. Let's check our units. We'll have feet canceling with feet, inches squared and inches to the fourth power in the denominator. So we'll have kip per inch squared, also known as KSI. And so this is going to be 1.266 KSI. And then we're at the top surface of our beam, and we can tell by observation that this is in tension. At the bottom surface, we do the same thing. We just change our value of C. So it'll be 11 kip feet times 12 over 1, 12 inches over 1 foot times 8.32 inches. And then we divide that by our moment of inertia. 488 inches to the fourth. And we'll have the same units. We'll have 2.25 KSI. And again, we can see from our graphic that our bottom surface will be in compression. And so we'll put a C here. The other thing that we should note is that the distance furthest away from our surface will always have the higher stress, and that's what we see. We see that we have the highest stress at the bottom surface in compression. Let's say we want to use the original flexure formula, which is our sigma x is equal to negative my over iz. We recall that iz is 488 inches to the fourth power. y would be negative 8.32 because we have a negative distance or negative coordinate and m is negative 11 kip feet because we can see that we have, this would cause negative bending. And so solving for our bending stress, sigma x is equal to negative times a negative 11 kip foot times a negative 8.32 inches. Don't forget our conversion factor, 12 inches per foot divided by 488 inches to the fourth power, what we see is that we have a negative cancel with a negative, but we're left with one negative, so we have negative 2.25 KSI. So when we use our flexure formula with coordinates and bending moments, positive and negative, and our negative sign, we see that we have a negative value for our stress, which of course means it's compressive stress. Let's look at this beam that has two plane bending. In previous beams, we've only investigated bending on the y x plane, but now, due to a moment in the y direction, we now have bending on the x z plane. To solve for the bending stresses in the x direction, we just use our flexure formula about both axes. For a circular cross section, to find the maximum bending stress, we use this equation. You may notice that the bending moment that is used is the vector sum of my and mz.
and here we have D, which would be our diameter of our shaft. Here's a quick example. We have a beam that is fixed at the far end. We have a downward force P as well as a couple that's being applied and that couple is parallel to our Y axis. What we're trying to solve is the maximum tensile stress. So we need to determine where the maximum tensile stress occurs. The stress caused by MA, that will be tensile on this front face while compressive on the back face. The stress caused by P, that will be a bending stress, and it will be tension on the top surface, but the maximum stress will be at the support. So the location of our maximum tensile stress, and let me erase a few over here, the location of our maximum tensile stress will be at this point. One last thing to note is that we have a length of L D is our height, and W is the width of our cross section. We'll use the equation from the previous slide, and we'll just work it through. So we have sigma x is equal to a negative mz. Well, mz is the moment about the z-axis, and again, we're looking at point A. So the moment at the z-axis is going to be our downward force P times the distance of L. And when we multiply that, we actually have a negative moment. So we'll put a negative sign. Y is our distance between our neutral surface and A. That will be D over 2. Then IZ, that's the moment of inertia about the Z-axis. So here's our Z-axis, or axis parallel to it. So the base would be W. The height would be d, and that would be d cubed over 12. And we'll add the second part, which is the myz over iy. So my in this case, that's the moment about the y-axis, and so that would be ma. And that's creating a neg. Uh, I'm sorry, that's creating a positive moment. Z is the coordinate, so that's going to be w over 2. And then we have the moment of inertia about the y-axis, and this is where we need to be careful, because about the y-axis, we're going to have a width, or we should have a base, I would say, of d, and a height of w, so that will be w cubed, and that will be over 12. Let's quickly look at shear stresses from bending. In most beams, shear forces are typically present according to our shear force and bending moment diagram. And so if we have a shear force, we have a shear stress. Sometimes we call it a transverse shear or a transverse shear stress. The maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral surface. So this is unlike normal stresses from bending where they occur at the top and bottom surfaces. Shear stresses in beams become less of a problem as the beams get longer. Um, if they have a length to height ratio of greater than 10, then um, typically the mode of failure would be from bending or bending stresses. The maximum value for shear stresses for different cross sections is as shown. For a rectangular cross section, we have 3V over 2A, and again, that occurs right at the centroid, so this is the cross section of the beam. For a solid circular section, the maximum shear stress is 4 thirds times the shear force V divided by the cross-sectional area A. For a thin-walled circular section, where we have a ratio of our outer radius to our wall thickness of greater than 10 to 1, and here's our outer radius, our O, and then this would be our wall thickness. If that's our situation, then our maximum shear is approximately 2V over A. In an I-beam, most of the shear stress occurs in the web of the beam, and it's almost uniform, and the maximum shear, again, is at the neutral surface, but it's a value of V over A of the web, V divided by the area of the web.